I'm excited to introduce Ronnie Eckert to you. Ronnie is uh, one of a librarian. She's one of our good friends and a librarian at uh, Moore. Um, she's traveled with us during this summer and done several of our uh, workshops. So we are excited that she's presenting to you today. She's doing one of my favorite lessons, uh, Ag in the Playing Field. And so Ronnie, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I'm Ronnie Eckert and today you're um, joining me in my library at Timber Creek in Moore Public Schools and I absolutely love Ag in the Classroom. So the lesson I have for you today is Ag in the Playing Fields and um, so I'm going to go over a little bit of the, um, I for sure want to talk to you about the objectives just because um, you want to know what you're doing this for, but it says students will identify sports items made from agricultural products Students will research their favorite sport. Students will use a variety of sports equipment to perform mathematical operations, and students will learn about the life cycle of plants. So this lesson is geared towards third, fourth, and fifth grade students. And um, if you download this from the agintheclassroom.org slash okay, which I'm sure hopefully you will, um, you will see all the standards listed on the right-hand side of the lesson. So a little bit about the background, um, I'm going to go ahead and read most of it, but I, I know you're capable, of course, of reading this, but I need you to kind of get into the flavor of what we're going to do today, so I kind of need to read some of it. So hang with me for just a moment. What would sports be without agriculture? Footballs, soccer balls, basketballs, and volleyballs, and baseballs are all made with leather from the hide of cattle. The best shoes, gloves, and mitts are made from leather too. Ball caps are made from wool from sheep and uniforms are sometimes wool or cotton. There are nets for volleyball, basketball, tennis, badminton, and soccer that are made of a nylon blend with cotton, which is one of Oklahoma's top crops. Um, it goes on to talk about the great food that we eat at sporting events like hot dogs, hamburgers, and pretzels and um, how that correlates with crops and agriculture in Oklahoma. Um, down at the bottom, um, it talks about the poss possibly the most important agriculture commodity, commodity used in sports is turf grass, the grass on which the game is played. The condition of the grass on sports fields can be making all the difference. Athletic field grasses must have dense, thick sod that can withstand impact and grow back quickly when it gets damaged. This is especially true in the sport of soccer. When the field's in bad shape, the ball can't move easily across the field and the players have trouble passing and poorly kicked balls are constantly flying all over the place. At the very bottom of the background, it talks about one of the best grasses for athletic fields in the Southern United States was developed at Oklahoma State University. It is called the Riviera Bermuda grass. It's a tough grass that grows back quickly when it's damaged. It's also the only Bermuda grass to grow from seed. So grass that grows from seed works better for playing fields because it can be planted when and where it's needed. So that's just the background to get you kind of going in what we're talking about today. Um, there's also vocabulary that is um, on the second page of the lesson plan. And so it makes sure that your students are familiar with certain words. For instance, um, I was working with a student, I'll have her sample later on, um, and uh, it was really funny because she said, now what's agriculture? So <laughs> anyway, important to know, right? So um, it talks about what agriculture is, the science, art, and business of cultivating soil, uh, producing crops, and raising livestock, which is farming. And then it goes on to talk about uh, Bermuda grass, soybean, and other words that you would come in contact during this um, Ag in the Playing Field unit or lesson. So um, we're going to start out with the very first activity and I'm going to go ahead and switch to my uh, document camera because I have some recreational balls that I want to share with you. So here we have softball. So um, there's a softball, there's a baseball. As you can see, these are in pretty poor condition and that's actually even recommended in this lesson because you don't want to tear up new balls. That, um, so I contacted some sports coaches and they gave me these for free. And so you could do the same thing because 
obviously they're headed towards the dumpster or um, I don't know what else you can do with them. But anyway, so what we're going to do is, and what you would have your students do is to take a look at the baseball and then decide what could the agriculture products be that are making up that baseball. And so you could have them jot that down or you could even jot that down um, you know, on a board or your smart board and have them make some guesses about what might be inside of here. Now, the next step, of course, is to give them the balls and, and let them take them apart. Now, um, I was going to have you all put some ideas in the chat about what you think is inside of those balls or what it's made up of agriculture products. So if you wanna go ahead and do that right now, um, I'll give you a second to, to uh, see if you can guess what might be inside of a baseball and a softball and just what makes up the ball all together. And you'll see why I said that. So hope you're adding some, some chat there. Yes, we're starting to see cotton, sawdust, question mark, string. Okay. Excellent. Horsehair, leather, cotton. Lots okay. of cottons coming in. Rubber bands. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start to share because I don't want to run out of time. And since I've tried to time myself, you know, I just want to be sure that we um, have time to see the activity. So as you can see, I have taken the leather covering off of the baseball. So I'm going to start with the baseball. Um, and also you might have noticed it has cotton string that makes up the stitching. So that is two agriculture products right there. Now the next part, when you start to take apart a ball, I will tell you it is a little bit difficult. And so you'll need to pre get ready for this part of this because otherwise your kids are going to, uh, it may take them a really long time. As you can see, I hope you can see it's a little bit, I'm having a hard time seeing what it actually looks like. I have a glare. But um, here's the baseball after the cover's off, and you might see some cotton string, and, and you might see where the old lacing was. I thought that was interesting um, that the dye was showing through. Anyway, let's keep going. So as you can see, my husband cut this ball for me, and we can definitely see inside now. So I'm going to back it off a little bit so you can see that it actually is the same as that other ball. There's the leather covering. There's the cotton string. And then what did you find inside? Do you see that? Um, it's very compounded, uh, lots and lots of string. My assumption is perhaps that that would be cotton as well. But it looks like it's got a lot of different fibers. And then the center core. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to this side so you can see it better. Can you guys see that? Um, you can see that uh, this part is rubber, so it would be neat to talk with your kids about what makes up rubber and what made up that string. And then if you look in the very center of this one, you can see that there is actually a wooden core. And so that kind of might go with what some of you all were saying with sawdust. Um, I actually dropped off when we were cutting this in half. I can't find the other piece to this one. but it's definitely a hard core in the middle there. So it's nice to now go back and look at what you thought was inside of that baseball with, with your students. And then they can write about what was in there and where each of those agriculture products came from. So that's the baseball. And now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the softball. And again, um, a lot of times the softball is um, made of a leather covering. I can't see if you can see that backside, but interestingly enough, guess what's inside? Can you guys see that? That is actually a polyurethane. And so I'm not sure how that relates agriculturally. I'm gonna show you the backside of it as well, but this one had nothing else inside of it. So I know that there are some softballs that might have other things. So anyway, this is a great opportunity to um, talk about and let them see what's inside of um, some of these recreational. And you can try it with others. Like um, I had this golf ball and I think some of you guys had mentioned rubber bands and stuff. And if you've ever seen the inside of a golf ball, I'm thinking that's where those rubber bands come in. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back off of my shared screen for just a minute. There we go. And so, 
that's one full activity that you can certainly do and it tells you all, everything that I just did is something that you can do with your students. So the next thing I want to talk about um, is uh, where you can have students work in groups and in those groups they can make up agriculture related names and they can um, do that for imaginary teams. So I know you probably started thinking of all the sports teams that have um, agriculture names already, but I want you to, you know, make sure you've gone back over vocabulary for agriculture and then let them develop logos and uniforms and mascots and posters and all that. And had I had you in front of me um, today, then I would have had you, you know, spend some time with a couple of students or a couple of students, a couple of teachers that were there and perhaps you could come up with your own imaginary teams but since we didn't have that i thought well i'm gonna have to come up with that myself so i came up with some samples so i'm sharing my screen again and um, so here is my sensational strawberries team shirt and then i also came up with something called the fighting zucchinis and the flaming jalapenos. Oh, that one, can you see it? Anyway, what the activity suggests is that, pardon my nose, is that students would um, come up with their teams and then after they had their teams, um, then they could spend some time explaining why they chose that, how it relates to agriculture. And then it's just uh, gives some of those kids that like to do art and things like that an opportunity to show off and share some of those skills with other teammates or students in the in there and make their team so that's that's the third thing that you would need in ag in the playing field and then the next one that they could do is the students would write a story about a day in the ballpark and they would track all the agricultural products that they used so I thought, well, that would be a really fun one to do with you, but I don't have you. <laughs> so I recruited a fourth grade student and she sent me through text um, a story. So I'm going to share that with you. It's not very lengthy, but um, so this is one of the ideas and it would go along with writing. You could even do it as a daily um, writing prompt before if you had that sort of uh, journal activity or something in your classroom. So. It says, um, I went to a softball tournament to watch my cousin. And for lunch, I had a yummy hot dog. It was made out of wheat for the bread, ketchup, and relish. The relish is made from pickles and the ketchup from tomatoes. Notice she's tracking the agriculture products. And uh, during one of the games, my cousin's team was about to win when her team made a home run. Then buzz, time was out. But guess what? The game was over, her team won. Remember, she's gonna be a fourth grader. Between games, we ate a snack. I had some Frito chili pie made of Fritos, some chili sauce and beans. The Fritos are made out of corn. I don't know about the chili sauce and beans are grown by farmers. So she did track some agriculture things there. We watched a couple more games and for dinner, we went to my house. We had a good dinner of pizza. It was made out of wheat for the crust, tomato sauce for the paste, or for the tomato, I'm sorry, I didn't understand what she wrote tomato sauce or tomato paste for the sauce and yummy pineapple and ham. We had such an amazing day. So anyway, that was a real little example there for the fourth activity that you could do with your class, a great little writing prompt to get them going. And the next one is my favorite part, um, being in the library research projects. So seven of them are shared, uh, seven examples and, um, you could decide which how you want to do it. It says students will conduct one of the following research product or I'm sorry, research topics about sports. There we go. So um, I wanted to share with you the second one, which says research the origins of five major sports and place them correctly on a timeline. Now, I know that researching the origins of five major sports you could think of that in different ways. You could think about if the students would want to have um, the origin of, you know, soccer. Where did soccer come from? Where did baseball come from? And so on. 
but I took it a different way, as you can see with my um, little cards that I have back here. And um, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to, to uh, figure out which ones became major sports in the United States? So it's the same idea as that. It's just a little taking it a different way. And so if you think about that, that's kind of what you want your students to do. The standard six for writing for fifth grade students, it talks about how they need to pose their own research question. And so um, I took it this way instead of researching how that sport, the sports got started. So um, Audrey, if you'll put that poll up for me, um, I was gonna go ahead and before we actually um, did the research, I would ask my students, okay, well, these are the major leagues and the, the things that we watch on TV and that we follow in sports. So there are five major sports that I have up there. And I would like you all to figure out which one is the correct order for when they were formed. So which is the oldest and which is the newest is basically what I'm asking. So I'll let you take a moment to do that poll. And then I'm going to um, put them in order of when they were formed. Here's the results for you. Okay. And so um, there were four choices. And um, the third one, which was Major League Baseball, then football, then basketball, then hockey, and then soccer, had 41% of the um, answers. So the others were divided quite the same, 26, 26, and then 22%. So we're gonna go ahead and close that and I'm gonna show you um, the actual way it looked, but I believe it was B, um, if you chose B. So if you'll look over here, I've got the, um, these cards are representing their, um, their symbol. So. Um, Major League Baseball, well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the answers and then I'll, I'll tell you how we researched that. Anyway, 1876 for Major League Baseball. The National Hockey League was 1917. Uh, the National Football Association was 1920. And then uh, basketball was 1949, or 49, sorry, 1949. And then the, the last one was Major League Soccer which um, was founded in 1993, and they actually started the Major League Soccer in, in the United States in 1996. And so um, when I was thinking about how I would do this, by the way, thanks for participating in that, um, we need to talk about how we would research that. And so you need to cultivate your uh, websites. I would not want to just send my students out um, to research on Google. And that's something that I spend a lot of time talking about and um, looking for true and valid information from reputable sources. And so um, I'm gonna go ahead and share with you, actually, I'm not gonna share it just yet, but I'm gonna talk to you about that. You need to think about that perhaps you would choose what you're going to research one day or maybe the morning and then by afternoon or the next day, have those sites where you want your students to go prepared, especially with it being third through fifth grade. So I hope that's making sense, but I just want to be sure that they get those right sources. And so I'm very fortunate in my district to have the World Book Online. And so I'll share that with you in just a moment whenever I uh, share, share how we found some of our information. But, um, Fortunately, I had that. If I didn't have that, then you would have to do your pre-research and then you, whether you have, I don't know what you have, Seesaw or your website, or if you're using Canvas, but you would have links that would help your students to be sure that you direct them. And I know that sometimes some people are like, well, that's not true authentic research, but at the same time, we have to guide them and they're still at a teaching in my opinion. So let me share with you the World Book real quick. We're gonna share right here. Oh dear, there it is. And um, I, ha can you guys see that? Yes, so I'm sharing. Okay, so um, this one, the reason I'm showing you this is that I'm gonna go on to another research question 
So first of all, um, I forgot to say on these uh, that we already put in order, I would go ahead and give to each group one of the five, and then I would have them look up on the World Book when those started, and they can take notes, and then we can go back and check to see if what we had ordered them in was the correct, and if not, we could talk about that. So that is one of the activities that is B on number five. So I'm going to go ahead and go on though to um, D, which is also on number five. And it says, in other countries around the world, football is what we know as soccer. Research to find the origin of both sports. And so um, again, I'm very lucky because I have the World Book available and I'm sure many of the other districts, I'm, I'm really missing um, Britannica, which the State Department paid for and it's no longer available, that, that's not happening. But anyway, um, so what I did in World Book was I typed in soccer and then I scrolled way down to the bottom till I found history. And then um, I started looking at dates and things like that that I would expect of my students. And so I'm gonna go ahead and share with you now what I came up with based on the information. So I, what I did was I, oh, can you guys read that? It's very blurry for me. Um, so basically um, the information you were looking for was to find out about football and soccer and research the origins. So instead of actually doing an actual timeline, I was doing a, um, I do like to do columns and graphic organizers with my students. And so I was just having them put down all the origins for soccer when it started, which by the way, London children played in, eight, in the 1100s. I thought that was interesting. And then um, compare it to football, which we now call American football. And it really began to develop in the mid to um, late 1800s. So anyway, I was only showing you this part to show that it was a note taking type um, activity but it was still researching. So that is one of the, the uh, things that you can definitely find easily through World Book. Um, the next one is um, on number five, and it's where you choose a sport and you research some aspect of the uniform or um, the equipment. And so it would be super easy to work in partners or even individually on that activity, especially at the fifth grade level. Um, but it lists acti or I'm sorry, uniforms that have to do with baseball and football and things like that. So that was a little bit harder um, to cultivate or to gather what, sorry, I'm trying to get back on sharing my screen again, um, to try to get students to find the information without just going straight to Google. And you don't want them to go straight to Google. So, um, boy, this share screen is definitely causing me issues today. Share screen, we're gonna look at this one. But what I found was, if you all aren't familiar with Smithsonian, well, I know you're familiar with the Smithsonian, but Smithsonian Magazine, I was able to um, find a really good article that had to do with football helmets. Now I know that this could be a little bit overwhelming for fifth grade students. So I feel like this um, would be a paired activity and that way students could peruse the article first and then they could go back and they can look for the certain um, aspects of a football helmet. Um, is what I chose as my research item. But anyway, the reason I would give them this one is I can trust it. I know this is a true and valid resource. And so it would be very helpful. And so what I'm saying again and again, <laughs> it feels like is make sure you know where your students are going. At this age, they need to research, but they need some direction. And so there are seven different research places for different uh, things that they can do. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen again. Hopefully I'm not making you dizzy, but I want to go ahead and go forward to another activity 
that is on here and I'm looking at my outline in case you see me looking off I have it um, posted so I can make sure that I uh, don't get too far off track anyway the next part is math and so number six has to do with Yep, that's an old football, isn't it? It's my son Ashton has his name on it. <laughs> um, he's actually 25. <laughs> so the activity involves um, measuring a football. And actually, this is number seven. I skipped number six, but we'll go back to it. Number seven, how would you measure a football? So students would develop a plan about how to measure a football. So I know some of you are thinking, well, could you use a ruler? So in the chat for just a moment, see if you can come up with how would you measure a football? So I'll give you just a moment to think about that. And what would you measure? Show you all the parts of the, so I'll give you a moment to put that in the chat. Okay, they are saying string, mm -hmm. um, string and, a, uh, and measure the length and the width. Good question, let's hear your answers. <laughs> a ruler. Water displacement. Oh, that was Melody that said, let's hear your answers. She's talking to everyone, not you. Um, <laughs> water displacement. <laughs> water displacement. That's a great idea. Uh, ribbon, string, and ruler. So what would you measure on the football, everyone? You're saying what you would use to measure, but what on the football would you measure? Be sure to include that as well. Yeah, that's why I held the football this way. Because <laughs> I, I thought of a few things and there obviously is not a wrong answer in this. Um, this is just to get you started and there's some words that go along with this that are provided and it offers some good discussion. Now we have ribs and length and circumference. There you go. Perfect. Um, that looks like the general consensus. Okay. So and weight, I, one more. One said uh, they would do the weight. Yes. And, um, you know, this football wasn't going to uh, take apart like in the first thing because I knew it was foam. <laughs> but uh, and also inside of footballs, you know, air. So um, I didn't want to take apart a football today just so you'll know why I didn't. Um, but anyway, there's no wrong answer. Students are formulating the different ways to measure. I was showing you the laces um, a moment ago because you could measure, you know, how long each one of the actual laces is, the, the length of where the laces is, and, um, you know, all of, it's just to get students thinking. And it, it is a measurement activity, which we all can practice that again and again, and our students need to practice that. So that one is number seven, but I'm gonna backtrack a little bit to number six, which is still to do with math. And I like number six because it has a couple of things that you, you can use in daily life, uh, life skills. There we go. Um, it says, a soccer field is 100 yards long and 50 yards wide. A football playing field is 100 yards long, not including the goalpost, and 53 and one third yards wide. Okay, so that's just the true facts right there. But what you want your students to do is find the area of each. And so teaching them about area, I know you, it's already going on all the time, but wow, isn't that kind of cool to be able to do it with something they really like, probably football and, and soccer. So then the second part of that is after they have the area, um, if one pound of grass seed per thousand square feet is needed to seed these fields, how many pounds of seeds would be needed for each field? So I think this is an excellent activity for um, students, and I think it would be really fun to even do it in groups and let them help each other with that activity. So that is, um, then I was supposed to talk to you about measure the football. <laughs> But before I do that, or as I'm, since I've already done that, I'm not going to do that part again. But I wanted to go back to the football and talk about that, what it is. A football is a prolate spheroid. So, you ever heard of that? So, and a chance to teach them some more uh, math terms. So, a prolate spheroid. So, in the chat, can you think of other things that are a prolate spheroid? If you can, put that in there. I'll hold the football to, to remind you. 
Anybody got any ideas there? <laughs> um, a pecan. A pecan, yes. Anybody oh, else? Anybody else? Good answer. I jelly agree. bean. A jelly bean. I think you've stumped them. I guess so. How about a peanut M&M? An almond. Just An almond. Just an almond. A Great. grain of rice, a sweet potato. Okay. Perfect. Even a potato, right? Depending on which one. <laughs> but this is a perfect time to, um, to introduce a prolate spheroid, what it is, and then give the kids a chance to make a list. And I actually had that list going, but I don't really need to show you that because I think you get the picture on that. Um, but also at this time, you could teach them what an oblate spheroid is. You guys know what that is? A sphalate, a oblate spheroid. There we go. I can't even say it. Is um, an example is a plain M and M. And so you could also go ahead and have them think in terms of sports and see if they can come up with other things or just things just like you just did for the prolate spheroid about what that is. So some new some new vocabulary and math for them today with that. So um, I want to go ahead and move on. Um, did you guys think of any of those oblate spheroids? I, I thought I kept thinking since it was a flat M&M, &M, I kept thinking of um, Someone oh, just said a flying saucer, a sports yeah. discus, hockey there puck, is. hockey puck, frisbee Every question mark. Okay. I was on those um those rainbow candies. I can't even think what those are called, but you know I'm talking about skittles. Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could think of. <laughs> so anyway, um the next thing moves into um art, but still with math, and that is have students draw accurate replicas replicas of their favorite sports team fields. And then they would measure and mark the lines correctly. So I think that's an excellent activity to teach draw to scale. And um, so that's, that's one of the, the awesome activities. The next one though, gets us to talking back about that background information that we had about OSU making that special Bermuda grass and um, it's talking about how you can, and, and the life cycle objective, sorry, I forgot to say that. Um, they can grow their own miniature uh, ball fields. And so it's very simple. Uh, you can use an aluminum pan if it's a rectangle field or a square aluminum pan if you are doing a baseball field and poke holes in some potting medium, so your soil, and then add in some rye grass and go ahead and, and teach them about the life cycle of plants, which I'm sure by third, fourth, and fifth grade, many times they have already witnessed this. But you're gonna take this a little bit further. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you, again, screen share, my um, field, and there it is. Can you see my grass? <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a real big um, going on with my grass, but if we could get enough going, you would, um, I'm gonna go ahead and take that back off, but I just wanted to share that with you that I actually did the activity. Um, but the what you can do with it is, of course you'll have to keep it watered, and um, that way they'll see the actual growth, but then they'll use scissors and they can cut the grass and, they need to have a ruler too, because the fun part of this activity, I think, I mean, I like growing things, of course, but the fun part is after they have it mowed um, with scissors, <laughs> they need to use a ping pong ball or marbles and um, find the perfect length of grass for which the ball moves best. So I think this could be a little bit objective, but if you had enough grass going, then it could also be, um, hopefully they would pay attention, you know, but you could conduct it over a length of time. I wouldn't expect them to do this all in one day. However, you could have them cut the grass, try the ball, cut the grass some more, try the ball and things like that. So Ronnie, sure that, yes. Sorry, we had a request for you to lift up your grass just in this screen oh, sure. um, and, and see if they can see it there as well. Thank yeah, you. Yes, oh, that looks great. 
No, that's great. Um, you can see it's been sitting outside and I used a uh, spray bottle to spritz it quite many times a day. <laughs> my husband's like, what are you doing? I was like, spray my grass. <laughs> but um, yeah, I didn't have a, a, I think my seed was old because I had just used some seed from my house. And so I didn't have a real good um, sprouting of all of it. But I haven't trimmed it with my scissor. I haven't mowed it yet. But um perfect activity. And then of course, I didn't have a aluminum, but aluminum pans are super cheap. I just had this um, super cheap bowl at home. And uh, you can go back one of the activities or what's included in the activity is to decorate it with toothpicks and things to make it be uh, representative of an actual field. So, you know, you could use some flour and, and um, you could make it uh, put in lines and things like that. So Anyway, perfect activities for uh, third, fourth, fifth grade students. And um, I think I'm almost done and I still have a few minutes. <laughs> so do we have any questions or anything? Because I haven't been able to see any of that. Are we still there? You are doing great. Lots of good um, feedback for you coming in. If anyone has any questions, um, maybe you're interested in some other lessons uh, that Ronnie uses. And Ronnie, if you want to talk about some other Ag in the Classroom lessons that you've used in the library. Oh, sure. Um, you could do that too. That'd be great. There's an, I wish I could think of the name. There's another um, lesson that has to do with sports and balls and you, um, Gosh, I wish I could think of that one. I've only used that with uh, fourth grade, but perhaps you ladies that are ag in the classroom can think of which one I'm talking about. Um, it's very, it's similar in that it involves uh, kicking balls and- Yeah, it's called ag in the um, outfield and then ag yes. in the playing field are the two. They kind of go together. Yes, ag in the, um, yeah. Outfield. Outfield. <laughs> So I like that one, but um, I've used this one for the research part of it because, um, and I have, I didn't get to grow the grass because that does, in the library in my situation, I don't always get to do everything in an Ag in the Classroom um, lesson, but I, I get to do parts of it. So I always do the bread in the bag. Um, I always do Grady in the silo, obviously, um, because, you know, it goes right, right along with the book and then it has some steam with it. So um, those are those are my very most favorite lessons that I can't skip at all, ever. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of some of the other lessons that I do and those are the ones that are coming to mind. You put me on the spot. <laughs> Ronnie, we did yes. have a question come through. Um, sure. It says, you said you asked coaches for the balls. Yes. Were these coaches at your school? We only have softball coaches, so I would need to branch out. Um, I just actually thought about kids that played sports and I talked to their parents and um, it was two, two different families um, and that's where I got it from. So I would think though, if you have like high school sports that you could probably check with your high school because like you saw the condition of these, they're, they're pretty pitiful. And I think that happens quite often where they just have a bunch of old balls laying around and so, yeah, but my husband used a sawzall, which was a little difficult um, in a vise. That's how he cut the balls in half, just so you'll know, because um, if you gave them a ball to take apart, I'm, I'm telling you, it would take a really long time. And you don't want them poking scissors and hitting their hand and things like that. So it is a good activity, but you have to prep for that activity for sure. I hope that makes sense. Oh yeah, thank you, Ronnie. And I love the idea of asking maybe families in your school too, because a lot of families will have, you know, old balls lying around. Yes. That's a good idea. Do we have any more questions? Okay, anybody else have a question that you would like to ask Ronnie before we let her go? I hope it makes sense how I said to, you know, like cultivate. I don't know how you guys um, share things. In more, we have Seesaw available and we just started Canvas for our online learning. And um, just having that research 
in some ways pre-researched um, is a very helpful tool and make sure that your students are on good and valid sites. I was looking at things and I came across and there was like a girl in a bikini, bikini and I was like, oh, I don't want my kids to see that. And I know we have filters and things, but anyway, I just wanted to make sure that you didn't think I was feeding them, but that I was being safe and cautious. So. Good pointers. So we have some new resources that we want to make sure you're aware of. Um, one of our brand new ones, let me get to the right link, is our Red Dirt State Symbols. And so this is brand new and, and um, it's on our website. You can preview it and we're supposed to have it delivered this week or next week to our office, I guess next week now to our office. But this is all of our state symbols and Melody uh, worked really hard on this one to um, make it um, something that your students can learn about Oklahoma. And I'm gonna switch back over here and bring Melody back in so she can talk about this if she wants to. Um, but this has got a lot of our state symbols in it. It's intended for third grade, but really anyone could use it. And so as, as Ronnie was talking about doing research, I was thinking about this new resource because this is a fabulous resource for your students to research our state and uh, to be able to um, learn more about it. Melody, do you want to say anything about this one? Sure. It's, uh, it was a labor of love, and I'm so excited to share you. Uh, share it with you guys. But Audrey, if you would slide down to those pages in the middle, the student pages, I want to kind I of will get that. there. So um, we have some like create your own, we have some language activities. Uh, on this, if you'll stop right there on that, okay. this one you could use with every single page. And so those uh, teacher pages or student pages will be on our website also. So you can copy those off. So you can use that page for more than one activity throughout the book. And so I really like that. We did include something fun um, in there. It's the last page. Would you want to show them the buffalo? I think that's I, really Yes, let fun. me. I'm trying to scroll slowly so I don't make anyone <laughs> sick, but also get there quickly. <laughs> Here we go. So we love this coloring sheet for them. It's, it's the really the fun activity that's in there uh, for them. The others have academic um, standards that go with them. But, you know, we have a state song. We have a state meal. Um, our state motto actually has a um, agricultural connection. We did include a few things that don't have an agricultural connection, but we just um, thought that students would like those, teachers would like those. Um, if you'll pause the next time you see a career connection, Audrey. Okay, here, let me go. Okay, oh yeah, great, so that has two. So we put some career connections because, you know, students need to uh, learn about careers way before they get to high school and be exposed to those. So there's just a little snippet about how a state symbol can apply to a career. And then we ha also have the QR codes for, uh, for you to scan and it takes you to a video. And I think that there are 12 videos that are attached. Um, some are more fun than others. Some are older than others, but we think that there's good information in all of them. And so I'm really excited for uh, teachers to use this and get the feedback. And so again, that's, that is on our website under our classroom resources and you can go ahead and preview it now and um, also request if you go into our classroom resources, you can request those. The uh, activity sheets are not on the website yet, but we will be adding them soon. So we just wanted to let you know about that. Ronnie did a fantastic job. We sure appreciate her and made us all think about um, ways that we can have our students do some research and, and how to do that effectively.